joining us for yet another ep classic episode of the show. I'm your host, Dr. Kingori. From the beginning, and we hope to keep the good vibes alive all year long. Leo mpaka tumualetea band kwa show. Zege, Delongoel, and the fusion music star in the house. We also have a very interesting topic, uh, Kama Kawaida. Like many of you, I've always wondered how foreigners get to join uh, military, ama army, in other countries. Unasikia mtu wa Kenya, mingia US army, kuna wasepia tunajua mingia British army. How do they do it? Kujitolea kupigwa kwa vita siyenu. Well, our guest for this episode is a gentleman who went straight from playing football in Kenya, applied, joined and served in the British Army, and is here to tell us all about the, the process, the experience, and more. David Etale is in the house! Yeah. Ah, wazi, wazi, wazi. We'll be talking to him in a bit. Rose Muhando um, is back on the trends for the wrong reasons, Maze. Again, she was on the trend list uh, for this prayer request this week. That's Ros Muhando's new song and uh, in the caption in Yami post kwa Instagram and I say that's a special prayer and on Bamungu because she's praying uh, to be married to a white man with money. <laughs> in short Ros Muhando is looking for Jesus. Now <laughs> Now you know what she meant akisema Yesu ni bwana. <laughs> Is this story na kutana nazo za Rose Muhando zinani hat? Kwanza juzi tu hapa wengine waliamua kumuingilia na Ruma sati aliona kana mahali thika akiomba Mungu Abrahamu. Not sure. Maze wacha tu. That story for another day. Elsewhere, a report by the Oxfam International, a global uh, charity organization that fights inequality, has this week revealed that President Uhuru Kenyatta is fourth on the list of top five wealthiest Kenyans. Maybe this is why everyone else is fighting to be the fifth. <laughs> but, but, but that's not the list. That's not the list your, um, your, your company. The other four on the list of the wealthiest Kenyans are Samir Meralis, Bimji Depar Shah, Jaswinder Singh Bedi, and Mahindra Rambai Patel. Now, making it in Kenya, in Kibarua, even our number one is number four. <laughs> and as usual, Kenyans have turned this into politics that, oh, this is evidence that our president is not the one leading the country. Mara, oh, even in the top five, our number two, Ametupuanje. And for those, <laughs> for those wondering who Jaswinda Singh Bedi is, Jaswinda Singh Bedi is on Instagram as KRG the Don. And you must see, I love what has it that uh, KRG and the number one kwa list, e video, ama yo list in Gandhi kwa before birthday. <laughs> in other news, a dormitory in Mwea GK prison in Kirinyaga was last week uh, set on fire, allegedly by inmates from uh, Committee Maximum Prison. Maybe they were mad for being demoted. <laughs> and it's reported that the firefighters were not able to put off the fire because the gates to the prison are narrow. <laughs> If this is true, then to mekwa tukidanganyo wezi miyaka zote ya tinjia kuenda kwa moto ni pana. <laughs> now, when we did a show featuring uh, ex-committee -com convicts and Drendete na Kaploti, Drendete said that committee is hell. Maybe the prisoners were transferred from committee to Kirinyaga wakafika and they were like, how can we make a hell out of this place? <laughs> what is missing in this prison? And then fire it was. They, maybe they wanted to feel the heat. They used to be in a prison that is lit. Now... This week, CS Magoha, uh, CS George Magoha, announced that politicians will not be allowed to send candidates success cards with their portraits. A very bad culture of politicians sending you uh, success cards with their pictures in it. Destroy them. <laughs> <laughs> These are God's children. <laughs> and they belong to Kenya. 
Can the politician spare them? I'm not saying this because I despise any politician. You don't need my face if I'm wishing you a success card. Now for this, I'm with the CS Magohamaz. See, Lazima won a picture and you enjoy your success card in the end of the now, you all know that we are big fans of, of opportunities on this show. Anything that sounds like it can help solve the unemployment crisis, CC Nile. Uh, now, the topic on, we chose for this episode is drawn from a combination of thirst for opportunities and the curiosity of the idea of joining an army in a foreign country. You do not want to miss this one. Our guest uh, on this episode, uh, mental health champion David Etale, joins us on the other end of this short commercial break for all the details you need to and how he managed to join the British Army as a Kenyan. See you guys in a bit. Welcome back to the Wicked Edition. Asante sana for joining us for this episode. I'm your host, Dr. Kingori. Shweleo tuta kuongelea the idea of joining uh, military in another country. And our guest has two very special stories. But mainly, I was, I've been so curious about both. But yenye, probably, actually, uh, the main topic uh, for our show this uh, episode ni your process ya kujoin military in a foreign countries. Na najua, hata nini mkona maswali mob sana. So, David Etale is in the house. Karibu sana. Karibu. Uh, I found it um, very interesting that uh, in one of the interviews you've done, Ulilizwa, how you joined um, the British military, and the British military, I believe, Nile, James Bond, and Nikuwa Sindeo. You just joined by applying online, Naika Kuevan. Most people don't believe that you can actually get an opportunity online and get through with it. How easy was it for you? Um, for me, it wasn't easy because my first idea wasn't to join the British Army. Okay. I joined the British Army because of the circumstances that found me at that particular moment in time. Yeah. I was a professional footballer. I played for Kenya Commercial Bank. I was playing for Tasca Football Club. In fact, we had just played an Africa Champions League match. The day I was approached by a cop here in Kenya about his cousin who had joined the British Army. But now, the reason why he told me that is because when I was playing football, I was still a, a matatu driver, part-time, and I was keeping guns for thieves on the side. So when their names started popping out, my name popped up too. And this guy who was a cop, he was a very good friend of mine. He knew me, and he knew the type of person I was. He knew I was doing that because I was desperate to make money. I was very young, and that's something that I do regret what I was doing. But it's also a blessing that I got another opportunity to show other people or to show my parents that I, I can actually do something with my life and help them as well. Uh -huh. But it takes a special kind of spirit. So all our thieves can join the British Army. <laughs> so everyone that grabs a gun has a chance to chart a different course in life. I will talk about my experience about the, what I was doing at that particular moment in time. I was trying to make a living and earning money in all ways. Remember, I was on a, when I was playing for Kenya Commercial Bank, when you win, you get 800 shillings. When you draw, you get 400 shillings. Every day, you get 50 shillings, right? When you lose, you don't get anything. How much did you charge for just keeping the bag? Nikitambo, nikitambo, nikitambo. We are three governments after. So for me, I'll go on and party, uh, 35,000. Per day? Eh, anytime when I could they give me 35,000. Whoa. Yeah. 2005? Yeah. Did you know the risks that you are taking by keeping the guns then? I didn't know because I was young. All I cared about was the money. Um, in 2005, if you kept the guns like 100 times, <laughs> let's say within one year, you have a house. <laughs> Why, why you, why you, did you fall in the class of poverty then? When you're, doing, when you're getting money in, an, in, an, in, an, a, in, in a way that you're not sub illegally, for me, that money doesn't stay. There's an expert in counseling. 
yeah. and talking to people. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that gentleman watching us right now on a Jambia? Ah, mimi ni kilipo 35k nita invest. Nikieka, nikieka hizo bunduki kama 50 times, hime nitosha kununu wakashamba, alafu niache. What do you say to that person? No, to be honest, I would say to that person not to even think about that at all. Try and find something legit to do. Don't do what you're seeing other people doing. Don't do what I did. Because at the end of the day, you can still save with the little, as little as you have. So what was the process like for you to join the, the army? As in, yes, you were, you, you were advised. Yeah. What, are the, what are the steps you followed to find yourself? They, they didn't do a background check, say, with the Kenyan police in that case? No, they didn't do a background check. But remember, during that time when I was applying, 2004, 2000, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, all the way up to around 2013, um, that's when Iraq and Afghanistan was really hot. Ah. And so they needed... Courage. They needed, not courage, they needed to add numbers because people were dying left, right and center during the wars back in Iraq and Afghanistan. So because the British colonized Kenya and all the Commonwealth countries, they were allowing us to apply and you join. But for me now, it was quite quickly because the documents that I sent, they saw that I was a footballer. So that means they knew I was physically fit. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. and you have to send your medical as well. Yes. And then I had to send my good conduct. But now my good conduct, since I was an armory keeping things for thieves, they didn't do a background check. Because now my name hadn't popped up in the system. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, like, they took you from the football pitch to Iraq, direct. As if <laughs> when you signed up, you, you signed up from uh, shooting and scoring goals and then sasa one, one moment then? Once you finish training, that's your soldier now. They send you to wherever you're supposed to be. And since I joined an infantry battalion, yes. in Iraq straight away, you go seven months, come back, then Afghanistan again. In this first mission that you went for, you get to a point you regretted that you'd rather just go back to being a goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> when such moments come to your head is because your friends are dying left, right and center. People are being blown up. People are being shot. You have to make sure that when you're doing the patrol, you block your emotions and feelings. You make sure that person gets to the HLS now where he's going to be picked up, taken somewhere else. And then you continue with the patrol. So like nothing happened. So those moments are the ones that you start thinking, why did I sign up for this? But at the same time, if you start thinking, like someone like me was thinking, I would rather do this job than go back to, go back to Kenya where I knew a, a situation was arising. People being shot left, right, etc. This is every day for seven months. Yeah, you, this, these are things that happen. They can even happen in front of your gate before even you go for patrol. And at that time, you are dealing with Osama directly. That time, <laughs> Osama. That time... Osama was still alive, yes. so he was conducting everything like normal. Yes, yes, yes. So you have to face the Taliban whether you like it or not. Sometimes you get ambushed. Now you have to start thinking about your training skills, how you're going to get out from that situation. Were you qualified to join the Kenya army after you've served in the British army? No, you're not, because they are two different countries. And both of them, they have two different laws on yes. how people are supposed to join their army. Yes. But for us, before we go to Iraq or Afghanistan, we used to come to Kenya and train in, at Samburu, in Samburu. Okay. So we train with the Kenyan army. So yes. whatever we do, we try and teach them so that even them when they're going either to Somalia or wherever they get deployed to, they can also use our skills, you know, when they're out there to try and save their lives to pro protect their brothers and sisters who are beside them. You're, you're working <laughs> for a different country, yes? Mm -hmm. And then there comes an issue between that country and your country do you have to switch allegiance? Do you, is, is that an option on the table? Or you are? Uh, when you say problems are an issue, do you mean when we are training with them or just an issue between the two governments? That's, I think that's two level. That's a two layered question. Yeah. Like um, if someone got into your nerves, yeah. would you beat them as a British? As in, <laughs> I'm a, you settle it as Kenyans. You know, that's, that's different because I've never been into that situation. Okay. But one thing that I would say about Kenyan troops and us working with them, it's very respectful because our common goal is the same. We are training to go to a war. So this is your brother. So let's say if I fight with you right now 
and we go to Afghanistan and there's a situation, you might save my life. Yeah. So I have to look at it in two ways. Yes. So for me, such things wouldn't happen. Yes. You'd have disagreements and arguments, maybe if you are supposed to shoot 12 o'clock or 2 o'clock or 11 o'clock or 9 o'clock, and maybe someone makes a mistake, you would tell them, look, this is how, try and aim your rifle this way. You know, those arguments are there, but I don't think it would get to a point where now you start fighting face because you never know who's going to save your life at the end of the day. It's interesting that uh, you use the clock for shooting. And knowing Africans and keeping time, how was it training? <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, would you tell someone 12 o'clock and they shoot 12.30? <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> that's what I yeah, like to know. Yeah, yeah, you know, using the clock is when you identify the enemy. When you identify the enemy, if I look straight in front of you, I would say that's 12 o'clock. Mm. If, if you're to my right, I would estimate either one o'clock or two o'clock oh. you know that's you those are the, the time. time yeah so we use the you use the clock so those are the terms that we just use but so you have you, to be specific you can't go like hey guys lunch time as in you <laughs> no 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 you so have to. you can't you can't because now if you if i'm telling if i say one o'clock i'm making aware my troop my troops who are beside me yes. that the enemy is one o'clock okay yeah sour sour and um, I, I meant this on a diplomatic level. The first question on okay. uh, sp sparring or having an issue between different countries. Yeah. You are a Kenyan. Yeah. You are, you've been drafted in another country. Yeah. And then there's a diplomatic issue between those two countries. Yeah. Um, as a military man, uh, do you get to um, patriotism or allegiance? To be honest, at the end of the day, I would go to the person who's paying my salary at the end of the day. Uh, thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've gotten uh, that out of the way, are there still opportunities, in your opinion, whereby Kenyans who are still interested can sign up to be shot on behalf of another country? <laughs> um, right now, the British Army, what they've done is they're not recruiting Commonwealth people anymore. And that's because they're not... There's no you, war. There's no war anywhere if you look around. Uh, a point of argument that... Oh, so you need us when people are being shot. As in, why can't you just recruit us? Why can't you just recruit us when there is no war so that we know that we are the people of just in case? You know, um, something funny, Dr. Kingori, about that is so many Kenyans are going through a lot of trouble here. Yes. So you, when, when there's an opportunity like that, you don't think about the war. You think on how you're going to help your loved ones, your family, because people are struggling. Sasa tukikuachilie wende, umeikuwa na mioto ya kukua British Army. Kukuja home kuchachisha. Hei ni metoka Britain. Ukisikia, <laughs> ukisikia risasi yapo ndiyo unaenda. Have you ever heard that? The first, first times. Uh, Sema wale watu wako wa bunduki. Kujeni hapa ni wambie bunduki ni nini. Au <laughs> <laughs> kuwa ikuwa na iyo? Uh, uh, Sija ikuwa na iyo. I think British Army in humble. I For think uh, I think hizi kuwa, hizi mawo. Noma. Ni noma. Juzile no. vitu unaona jo. Watu wengi waneza kachini. Misi hizi yona movie. Is it Mark Shaw? Where is he on a movie? Ah, Kabisa. Ah, where is he on a just a lala? Walai. Eh, where is he on a movie? At these movies, Iraq, Afghan, Wapi, Missy Onagi. At us, where is he catching in your own? But at us, we can recommend a movie. Kali to find a place to forward. Ah ah. Z. Where is he watch? Where is he watch? Just in a nikumbusha. Your place. Na jomi yangu kuangu iku a movie. Kuangu ilikuwa ni real life. No. Isomia kamob. Eh, alafu. Besti nywa kidedi. Una feel ni kama nyinyi amkudu pati yenyu poa ah. unaona ju sasa uni mtu sasa mnajua ayuko mkirudi brito my parents ama my sister my brother atakuliza hey brother angu alidedi aje hebu niambie una have to explain so, ama lazima pia usafishe so inabidi una explain juu ni family wanataka closure sa hiyo tuku deal nayo is already tough enough so niambie mimi sasa nikae nianze kuona ma movie alafu niko na hiyo PTSD na nisumbua siezi la poa so ina bidiani inakuwa niko tu on the edge kila wakati yeah. as after hizo miaka zote uli, yeah. ulitoka military ulitoka yeah, nilitoka military kabisa which year uh, after medical kila kitu kuisha 2017 2017 yeah. but iraq ulikuwa huko matuo 204 hizo tunaongea juu ya 2008 208 mm. but mpaka over 10 years later bado ina 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 yeah. Don't you wanna come here? Like, if there's one thing that joining the the military does to you, you'll be trained to to go to war, 
but you'll not be trained on how to come back home. No, masana. Iyo utawai trainiwa. So kama mimi ni kona psychiatrist, ana nipigia gasimu, ata kama ni metoka military, yes. three times a week, ata ni Kenya. So ye ni kunipigia na kunijulia hali, devi ulalaje, uliota hizi vitu. So them, they are there to manage your PTSD. PTSD kuangwa itawaisha. Okay. Yoni kitu ndaishi now for the rest of my life. Forever, forever. Eh. Na uneza advice, msea join army, kama hivyo ndiyo kunenda? Mimi kuangu, kama uneza pata kitu ingine ya kudu, tafuta kitu ingine. Gwenye <laughs> ukiwa, ukiwa, ukiingi ami jo? Noma. Eh, ni noma. Juwata sa zingine, nilisikia swali umaulizwa about sisi kufanya kitu mbaya. Sisi tukifanya kitu mbaya kwa wozo na mama lipopote. We don't get away with it. Tukirudi uke unaenda court martial. Okay. Eh, you mean, kuna story UK, bestia liona, bestia ke kimado na Taliban, na ye mwenye, Taliban amesarenda na kamada. Uo mse ilibidi ya meenda court martial, alishikwa. Bro, you wanna tell me that you are in a war zone, mm -hmm. and then you see a Taliban shooting your friend. Yep. Yeah. Alafu wa surrender, uh -huh. they surrender, you can't shoot them. You can't. Watch out evil. If you see a Taliban and he's put his weapon on the ground, you have no right to shoot that person. Atakama, they just shot someone in Yes, know. because they have, we have something called an card alpha, rules, say to see upewa, tunekaga kwa mfuko. Ukiona Taliban akona weapon na meka chini, na aja kupointia, you can't take them out. So, they can shoot like this. Yo sasa sunona yako ni a movie. Ah, ni mingia kwa cinema sana. Ni mingia kwa cinema. Ni mingia. Na, na, so, hizo ma split second, haki ya nani, wei, wei. Hizo split second decision. Ini ya mwisho kabisa. Split second decision. Hacha ni kulize ya movie alafu wei tuambe. Oh, siya mwanga, you cannot leave anyone behind. That is true. Hata kukue kumewaka moto waje. Hata kukue kumewaka. Mse wenu, you have to go get them. Yes, even if someone has been shot and died in front of you, ama kama me kuwa blown up na yuko kando yenyu. You have to take you, them. You can never leave a man behind. That's our policy. You have to take them. Even if your assessment shows that your life is at risk too. Even if my life is at risk too, I'll make sure I deal with whatever is trying to put my life at risk. Then take your... And then attend to my brother or my sister. So we can never leave them behind. That is just something that is in us. And I think it's also in me, naturally, right now. If I see a brother struggling in li life right now, siwezi kuachilia. Eh, na juyo story, daru kurikomend ya movie moja ya British military, haina mabunduki. Kabisa. <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear haina. Uh -uh. Hata kama ikona fair stack. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wazi wapi makofi ya David Kali Apo <laughs> sawa Wapi makofi ya Zege de Longuer And the Fusion Music Star uh, Asante sana Wapi makofi ya pia uh, I'd really like to appreciate uh, the team that has made this possible From behind the scenes uh, Kwaach Tom Dektari Our director Mark Mark Ndome tunamuitanga Under the Dome Na <laughs> Eh hey, esta na Jane pia nimeona Jane hapa kwenye Jane ako sound Regan ndio ako sound leo Regan mekenye yule hata ongeangi na hata sijui alijipataje kwa studio za sound Na <laughs> <laughs> Regan aongeangi mazee kila mtu mwenye amemekishwa possible rudia sibota mazee eh, kwenye vision mixing kila mtu asanteni sana until next week see you next time my name is Dr Kimoli <laughs> Everything, but I can't do without you, baby. Na kupenda, baby, you are You are the sweetest song that only my ears can hear, baby. Uzusa la kama di.